hey guys welcome back to another episode of beauty and the budget and today we are talking about what we can do to minimize the effect of all of the stuff that's happening right now and by stuff i mean the inflation the recession the war asian everything it's having an impact globally so how can you and your family and me and my family you know do things to ensure that the impact is reduced well let's ha let's have a talk let's get into it now many of you may say oh it's the same tips and whatever but look these tips are tried and true for a reason because they work and maybe you may figure out something else or find some gem within these tips that i'm about to give you and if it is that you have any ideas as to how families can reduce the impact financially then you can feel free to leave a comment below and share because what each one teach one sharing is caring all right so for the first tip we're going to look at the first thing we're going to say i am going to say the bible says it too is to avoid envy yes it don't make no sense you're sitting down and you're bemoaning your situation and then you're going to be looking over at that person and this person and you know being envious of what they have because each person's situation is different and the truth is you nor i don't know what they did to get the, the things that they have or acquire their material resources so the first thing we're going to do well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out any negative mindset because if you start with a negative mindset, it means that you're starting off on a bad foot. Remember, you are doing this for you and your family and you want to see how it is that you and your family, right, can withstand the economic pressures that are happening now. So it doesn't make a sense that you're looking over at another family and looking at what they have and envy because when you're envious, it leads to you being discontented with what you have. You're not happy again. So if one time you're used to like, I don't know stew peas and rice or mackerel and rice once it is that you look over at that side and you see that that family is eating pizza hut every night you don't want your little mackerel and rice anymore I don't wanna do this anymore. when mark you your mackerel and rice was way more nutritious in content and more filling than what the, the other family could have been purchasing mash up mash up the negative mindset so that is tip number one so we're starting off on a positive note no what can you do of course i don't name beauty and the budget for no reason so the second thing you're going to do is you're going to create a budget because if you don't know where you are you don't know where you're going if you don't know how much gas in the tank you don't know how far it can take you so you're gonna look at the budget right you're going to analyze what are your expenses and what are what what are what is your income that is coming in i see where the shortfall is no if there's a shortfall which <laughs> let's face it in this day and age there is always going to be a shortfall the best thing that you can do when creating the budget is to make sure to prioritize the expenses that you have prioritize i'm just not ready for all of this it's just <laughs> Um, there's this uh, saying called the four walls rule if I'm getting it right I think it's the four walls basically you want to ensure that you have the four pillars so that is food clothing shelter and of course there's another one which I'll put right here but I, 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 I will put it right here okay don't don't fight me but it's just making sure that your expenses are taken care of so your expenses your food your clothing your shelter right so that's it so your four pillars no once those things are taken care of then you can go ahead and be discretionary with your your your, your spending but we're not touching the discretionary today we're talking about the four pillars so if it is that you can perhaps let's say you need clothing but the the income is very very tight is it possible that you can probably do some tweaks to the clothes that you already have do some repairs maybe the jeans wash out maybe you can get a pack of dye and dye the jeans instead of buying a whole new pair if it is that, that you're not able to buy a new pair this time around and maybe push back that expense so it's not that you're not going to take care of your needs you know but it's just that you're going to prioritize when it comes to clothes you're gonna buy items that you absolutely need right now right you're not trying to keep up with the dollies no shade to the dollies you're not trying to keep up with the joneses you're not trying to buff you're just trying to 
make sure that you survive in a way that you and your family can thrive sustainably so if it is that you need it now because let's face it you need clothes to go to work and you need clothes you need clothes if it is that you are absolutely in need of new clothes now well you can shop sales so you know you have like a sites online that you know they have some reasonable clothing you have end of your um sales you have the thrift stores some people are very some people are very uh skeptical about thrift stores oh no god no god please no 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 but let me tell you you can get some really really good bargains and there are thrift stores in jamaica you can search on instagram to find these stores but these are stores where they sell clothing that has been purchased before by somebody else sometimes they have been worn like one time but they're still in good condition so i mean you can go ahead and buy it right there have been multi-million dollar businesses built on the thrift store economy so i don't see nothing wrong with it so mm, but if it is that that's not your thing right because i'm not forcing anybody to do anything if it is that that's not your thing you can shop sales to save some money and you can get some nice styles some really good styles that you know you can use to fix up your wardrobe without breaking the bank so wow. that's um what it is for clothing now another thing to know to the clothes know that you buy the clothes right in terms of keeping stable economically and so on you don't want to go and wreck them take care of your things take care of your things it makes them last longer right so you don't have to be buying over and over and over and over in jamaica we have this thing where we have our yard clothes separate from our go out clothes which is essentially a separation between clothes that you wear casually in the yard or in the house to lounge around or do yard work different from clothes that you wear to go uh with a work or for recreational activities so we separate them in the Caribbean. It's not just Jamaica. In the Caribbean, we separate our clothes so that when it's time to go out, it looks great, okay? Great story, compelling and rich. We're just saying all of this to say, take care of the things that you have, including your clothes, so you don't have to keep buying and buying and buying over and over and over and running out. You have your one pair of shoes, take care of the shoes. Our grandparents did it and they turned out just fine. We can do it too. All right. What we're doing is using lessons from previous uh, events in history. For example, the First World War, First, uh, first and Second World War, the Great Depression and so on. Look how these people survived. Look how our great grandparents and our grandparents survived and thrived. So we are in that same type of situation now or something kind of close to that, which we've never really seen before in our generation. So we can use their trip their tips to survive and thrive also let's talk about utilities people in jamaica we cannot stand two very very famous companies because of their propensity for billway bill out with the light anyway what i'm trying to say is can we do things to conserve on the utilities that we use in our house because we know you and i know that these companies have no heart when it comes to giving us that big bill at the end of the month and god help you if it is not paid because they will cut off your lights with a quickness they will cut it off as you said and it doesn't matter if you decide to go down to their offices and act a fool it don't matter they usually have the last word unfortunately so what can we do we don't want to be powerless in this so what we're gonna do we're gonna minimize the lighting right we're gonna minimize the, the the way we use the utilities so for example you know those yellow yellow bulbs those are the the incandescent bulbs those bright they burn a lot of electricity so how about we switch out to the fluorescent bulbs the, the cool white bulbs that save energy we can try that that will make a big impact no here's a little known tip for persons who have the the cable boxes have you ever put your hand over the cable boxes and felt how warm they get those things burn okay 
and I saw a big difference personally in my bill when I started plugging out that sucker at night. Okay? Okay. So you can try it. Plug out your utilities that are not in use, which includes heat generating devices such as the cable box, your power strips. Well, I mean, the power strips are negligible, but if you're, if you're the type of person to leave your phone on the charger, you leave the charger plugged in all day. We don't, we don't, we're not doing that anymore in 2022. Plug it out, okay? Um, the lamps, plug out the fans, plug out, plug out what you're not using. We don't have no money like that to be taken up and given to Mr. and Mrs. Light and Power Company, okay? It's, it's expensive. We're not doing that because we like food, we like clothes, we like nice things. And if I have to be taken up and giving it to these people, then I can't get them nice things, right? So we're going to conserve. The same goes for the water, all right? I know we all want to have a long, luxurious shower, but can we, like, you know, find a happy medium? Tone it down a bit. Don't leave the water running while we're actually putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush. You know, things like those. Cut the, cut the shower short by a few, you know, seconds. It's not going to kill you. I promise you are not going to stink. It's called a military shower, okay? It, it, it's, it's a way that you do to minimize the amount of water that you waste. You know, we have the shower running while you're there soaping up your rag. That's wasting water. So we're not going to be doing that in 2022. We ain't got the time for none of that. We don't have the time for none of that, all right? Entertainment, all right? No. Hmm. I was going to say Netflix, but... All right, some of us have Netflix Netflix accounts. Some of us have um, subscriptions, cable subscriptions. We have subscriptions to our favorite TV and streaming services and so on. Things that, you know, make life a little bit bearable. You come in, you can watch a little movie and take your mind off things. Great. Is there any way that we could minimize, probably change the existing package that we have maybe we have the super duper package we have three million sports channels that we're not going to use because we ain't got all that time can we downgrade that package how about that is it that we can i don't know do without one of our pro subscriptions this year this this month you know try it out uh, months at a time we don't want to make them rich we want to keep a little of our coin in our pocket so for example like a netflix subscription so some of us sign up on netflix to watch certain series that we feel like we can't do without cool when that series has ended and we don't binge watch out the thing can we close the subscription temporarily till another must have series comes up then i will feel like all right let's do this you know Let's, let's try stuff like that. You have to be smart with using your coins, right? So these paid subscriptions, we really need to think about whether we can live without them. The gym subscriptions. I mean, I don't have a gym subscription. But, you know, there is free stuff on YouTube. You can get a free class on YouTube. Maybe you can do that for this month, you know, instead of going to the gym every month. Or paying for the subscription and not going to the gym every month. You know, look at how it is that you are using it. Are you getting the full use out of your subscriptions and, and these additional services that you're paying for? If not, maybe it's time to let it go like Elsa. Okay? Okay. Oh, okay. No, the next thing we're going to look at is food. Now, me love food. I love food. Everybody knows that I love food. I cannot live without food. Can you live without food? No, sir. I don't think so. So, how about this? The supply chains are being severely impacted now by the wars in Ukraine and other global conflicts around the world. We're having a lot of issues related to climate change that means that when the crops are supposed to be nice and healthy and flourishing and an abundance of food, there is actually drought, right? In fact, right now, a lot of the world is suffering from famine which thankfully in the Caribbean, we haven't reached that level yet, thank God. And we want to not take that for granted, right? That is one of the blessings that we have waking up every day and thanking God. At least we can have a tree in our backyard somewhere, okay? But in the meantime, what can we do practically to maximize that benefit? Well, one of the things we can do is 
plant a garden. No, you may say, beauty of the budget, I don't have no space, I don't have no land space. Look, I don't have land space either, you know, you know what I do? It's called container gardening. Container gardening is where you plant crops, perhaps seasonal or cash crops, in a small container or in a container. So, for example, those five litre empty bottles, those plastic bottles that you would normally toss out, cut them, cut them in half, put some soil in it. Plant a seed, my darling. Plant a seed, my sister. You will reap me and my whack Nigerian accent. Being serious, we need to plant. Plant something. Plant something. You will reap. Now, in the Caribbean, in Jamaica here, one of the crop that you can easily reap and that's nutritious for your family, easy to grow, withstands everybody with the black thumb, then people who can't grow nothing, they're very hardy plants, is pak choy. Pak choy. Kalalu, these are sources of nutrients, cheap, cheap nutrients that we can plant for our family. All it takes is a little tip of water daily and a little container. You can plant your little pak choy in a little um, plastic container and you don't even have to root it out when that thing has come up to fruition. You just clip off the leaves, just like you'd prune a plant, just clip off the leaves, cook those leaves and leave the roots in the ground to continue growing. So that is how I do my container gardening. So that way I don't have to keep replanting, replanting, replanting. I just go outside, clip off the big leaves when I'm ready to cook and leave the root in the ground. So things like that. So in your country, or where, where your area are there government plans or agricultural plans that help local persons to plant you know is there somebody in your neighborhood with a green thumb where you can get a few seedlings can you buy a few seedlings in jamaica we have the bauxite industry of jamaica and we also have rada that is in kingston located at hope road that has been a lifesaver for me i i love those two places why because i am able to get seedlings at an affordable price and by affordable i mean 25 jamaican dollars will give me a seedling okay so i can literally go up there with 300 jamaican dollars in my pocket which is less than two us dollars and leave with a whole new farm yeah i've done it i'm about to go there now <laughs> but yeah so you can go up there and you can just Get a few seedlings it does not cost a lot and the rewards are many when you have your own little garden and your own little plot you can reap you can get together your little thing you can get your little pumpkin you can get your plant your banana plant you have a friend with a banana shoot plant your your, your, your planting if you don't have the space plant it in a container you plant your, 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 your um, peppers your tomatoes your parsley your thyme your mint your pak choy, kalaloo, you know, so you have, you have a little garden for yourself. You have something that you can rely on to even supplement the food that you are purchasing. So that means that when you go to the market or the supermarket, you don't have to buy those things because guess what? They're growing in your yard, right? For persons who are interested in agriculture, they can get a few chickens. Whether they want to grow them as meat or grow them as for eggs, as in grow them as eggs, mm, that's one wrong. But you know what I mean. If you want to get a few layers, all right, chickens that do that lay eggs for you, and so you can have a steady supply of eggs, which is filled with protein, then you go to the 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 uh, the, the agri stores and you get yourself a few chickens. All right, and if there are free government programs in your area or in your country, take advantage of them. Take advantage of the freeness because right now around the world, governments are encouraging persons to grow um, their crop. I think in one country, I think it's India, they are considering scaling back the work week to a four day work week. Why? They are encouraging persons to plant and work their own farms in their backyards on the fifth day. And they are considering doing this for three months, which in their mind, they're allowing persons to be able to sustain themselves by creating their own uh, source of food. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I recommend and I stress to you that you get 
involved in a backyard garden if you don't have a backyard and you live in a little apartment get your little get yourself two crazy gym containers two little ice cream containers put a little seed in it plant, plant something and your family will be able to benefit from that because they have a steady rich supply of supplemental food now when grocery shopping we have to find the best bang for our buck so if that means buying in bulk it does save a lot for persons who are able at, at the time to buy in bulk we have we have a few stores in jamaica for example uh price mart is one of those stores where persons can buy food in bulk we have our wholesales downtown we have mega mart we have you know we have we have different different outlets in jamaica and in your area, I'm pretty sure you have like Costco and different Sam's Clubs and all of those retail and wholesale outlets where you can buy things in bulk at a reduced price. So if you can buy in bulk, buy in bulk where possible. And if you can buy an extra one, do that. Because I'm telling you, the supply chains, them under pressure right now. They are under pressure. They are under pressure from the war. They are under pressure from different events that are happening all across the world. And because we are all so intertwined, all of us are connected. So it doesn't matter if something is happening 3,000 miles away. At some point, it does affect us, right? So if it is that when you're bulk buying, you are able, let's say you're bulk buying a, a bag of, a big bag of rice. Are you able to buy another one so at least you can store that away? If it is that you're able to do that, great. If it is that you're only able to buy the one, use it as sparingly as possible. But we don't waste food around here. We don't want to be wasting food, okay? That is not cute. That is disrespectful to the food. That's disrespectful to the food, okay? And we don't want to disrespect the food. So we are not going to be wasting food. We're going to ensure that we store the food properly and keep it in a way that we don't have to toss it out. All right. Now, one little tip that I found that works for me is putting rice and grains in the deep freeze. So if you have a deep freeze and you buy your rice, drop the whole bag of rice in it. It minimizes the possibility that when you're using it later, you're going to find small insects or weevils. <laughs> so we don't want any of that to happen to us. So... Putting the food in the deep freeze, it keeps it longer. Putting it in the freezer, if you can put it in the freezer, it preserves it longer. All right? So I do this with bread also. So if I buy bread, I usually buy like three breads and I put them in the deep freeze. And I take them out when I'm ready to use them. I take them one, one a week. Cut them out and we're good to go. Right? Um, and it keeps them fresh. No, another thing is we're going to plan our meals, plan our meals, plan our purchases before we go to the grocery store. We don't want to wait until we reach at the grocery store to turn idiot. Start thinking of random things that weren't or wouldn't have been on our list if we had been prepared. No. When you're shopping for like um, fresh produce, fresh produce, buy the ones that are in season. So it don't make no sense to me that you're going to be looking for breadfruit when breadfruit is not in season. Because you know that if you try to buy breadfruit out of season, you are going to pay a higher price. Buy the foods that are in season so that there's a glut on the market at that time. You know that when it's time for apples. Apples, 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 apples all around. So the prices are lower by it at that time. Don't wait until when apple season done. You, have, you feel like you have to have apples and then you're searching around to get a high price. You don't want that, right? That's the way to go. So it's always best to buy the foods that are in season and work with those. Junk food. And yeah, this applies to me because... You know I love KFC to infinity to infinity. <laughs> but can we minimize our purchase of junk food? Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> can we minimize the purchase of junk foods so that we have more nutritious foods going in our bodies? Right? So we have build up with structure 
and we are reducing the strain on our pocket because as much as me love kfc these price increases are crazy these price increases are crazy and yeah i need to know reevaluate whether my pocket can support this type of lifestyle it's, it's expensive finally we want to reuse our leftovers yes but i don't have to tell you guys that because you know jamaica is the land of sunday monday even tuesday wednesday too but i'm just saying if it is that you have your leftovers we're not throw them out enough as long as it don't spoil and the food is good we are not throwing it out mix and repurpose it or you think fried rice come out hmm? yeah so we're gonna mix and repurpose and make sure that we're not wasting food in this day and age so guys these are some of the practical some of the more practical tips that we can use um to ensure that we kind of push on the blow to our finances or 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 lifestyle or way of living because if it is that we can implement some of these it means that we will have more money in our pockets we will be able to conserve what we already have we will uh, we will be able to make the most of what we already have and also as it respects like foods that we grow and so on or cooking um, foods that we cook for ourselves instead of going out to fast food outlets we will ensure that we have a healthier lifestyle all right so if there are any other tips and tricks that you are thinking of that could help in a practical way to push on the blow of the economic fallout well please drop a link below but right so guys thank you for tuning in to another beauty and the budget i'm gonna go now because yeah i'm gonna go buy myself a few seedlings at rada so i will see you guys next time on beauty and the budget where we will be exploring all these little side hustle tricks including amazon kdp and fiverr and how it is that you can earn money online to get additional income for your family but until then this has been beauty and the budget saying ciao